Welcome to this week's Aiding Your Game. In this week's video, we're going to talk about some of the tools that DMs have available to them, how to utilize them in your game, and how best to throw off your players so that there's less metagaming at your table. Let's jump into it. Now, before we start this video, please make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button. If you enjoy the content, give me a thumbs up. Share this video with your friends who may enjoy it. If you don't mind getting the notifications, please hit that bell. Leave a comment and let us know what type of content you would enjoy seeing in these videos. And check out the description box where there are links to different content and ways that you can help support our channel. Now, when you're creating stories and adventures for your party to go through, I still recommend to everybody, whether they're a new DM or an experienced DM of the fantastic content in the Dungeon Master's Guide. When you're looking at setting up challenges or populating your caverns and dungeons, whether you're looking for interactions at urban locations, creating lore, even just planning out what you could do in the future, the appendixes in the back of the Dungeon Master's Guide are indispensable. They're a tool that I use all the time and I highly recommend that you do too. For instance, Appendix A is great for putting in details and listing out what could be found in different locations, in different settings, in different areas of your adventures. You can utilize random roles to put down items that characters may find when they're investigating or inspecting areas. You can pre-roll and populate your adventure settings with that information. And utilizing that appendix really allows you to give some consistency to your world and the environment and what's in that environment. But I want to focus heavily on Appendix B, your monster lists. Now, most players generally are able to utilize the monster manual or look online and get data about the monsters they'll encounter. Sometimes this allows some of that metagaming where they know if they're going up against trolls, they want to tell everybody to utilize fire. And this can be a little bit of a challenge for a lot of GMs just because they're able to thwart your plans really fast and it's not much of a challenge. Oftentimes players can come back and say after something like that, the GM is not challenging them enough. When you know the region or area that your adventures are going to be taking place, consulting these tables and kind of looking at the common creatures that are found are a great tool to start populating the areas of your adventure. For instance, if you're in a forest setting and you want to create some different challenges, just consulting the forest monsters will give you, by CR rating, the type of monsters they can encounter. Here's the Appendix B, and looking by area or region of what the monsters generally or commonly found in those areas are. It's really nice because it lists the CR rating and experience of each monster. It allows you to really pick and choose based on the area that your adventure is taking place. It's a fantastic tool. Now utilizing the encounter builder, you're able to adjust the number of creatures based on whether you want that to be easy, medium difficulty, hard difficulty, or deadly. But another thing you can do is look at adjacency. If you're in a forest environment and you want to utilize a monster that is not in the forest, it's going to be something that has wandered into the forest as well. Consult plains or mountains. Think of trolls coming down from the mountains or some type of axe beak coming into the forest from the plains. While Appendix B is in alphabetical order, it's not too hard to decide what type of areas will have adjacency to other areas. Aside from the fantastic graphics, the charts that have all the information you need, you can literally flip from one page to the next by challenge rating and choose different types of creatures that could be moving through other areas. It's a fantastic way to really dive in and look at similarities and differences of creatures of the same CR rating without having to go back and forth in the monster manual. This will be a way to throw the players off a little bit because they won't expect 
that type of encounter to, to occur in a forest setting. Additionally, in your monster manual, remember that the monsters listed, the stat blocks listed, are basically kind of your level one. So it would be similar to a first level fighter who is just right out of the stat books. As a DM, you can utilize those guidelines and then adjust it accordingly to make it more challenging, to make it different, to make it unique, to throw your players off a little bit. As long as you're not going super crazy with it and really throwing everything out and, and trying to beat your players, the goal is really to challenge the players and the player characters. Now the monster lists are a great way to do that. The lists go by location so you can find what type of creatures are generally found in what location, also by CR rating. So if you're creating a encounter that you know you want to be a medium encounter, you know you need to have three CR2 creatures, you can go right to the CR rating and look at what type of creatures are there. This is another way to kind of change up things that are not normally found in a forest, but could be wandering through the forest, traveling through, tracking down your PCs, hunting your PCs, or even transporting ill-gotten goods or slaves or something that the PCs can encounter in that environment you're playing with. Here's the second section of Appendix B showing the creatures by CR rating. This allows you to pick the creatures by CR rating and then justify them being in the environment with some backstory or coming up with some creative reason on why those different creatures could be located in the region even if they're not commonly found there. This is a great tool to change up what your players may expect by the environment your adventures are taking place in. The Appendix B is a great tool for you to use in your adventure creation. If you're not going with a pre-made module or module book and you want to create your own homebrew adventures, Appendix B is something that will help you populate your encounters, correctly challenge your players, give you ideas on how to change things up so that you can better challenge the players and characters and yet drive consistency through the game realms. Just like any type of tool, having the right tools is gonna to make your job as a DM easier. It's going to allow you to quickly and easily adjust your game, build your game, and react to the character agency in your game by giving the information you need in a good format and allowing you to have a base to start that creativity really flowing and picturing and coming up with ideas to better build an environment that your characters will have a good challenge experience in, rewards that'll be meaningful and tie into the environment, and have your players be more immersed in your game world. Now in recent videos, we utilize this type of information right out of the Dungeon Master's Guide to Build an Adventure, which you can download for free. Check out the links on our adventure building video. And I utilize these tools and items out of the Dungeon Master's Guide quite extensively. Of course, there are all types of online tools as well that you can tap into, as well as groups to help answer questions and everything. But I can't stress enough for DMs, whether you're new or very experienced, having that Dungeon Master's Guide handy and utilizing it and really taking the information that it contains and putting it into practice and play is going to make your GM sessions a lot more impactful, consistent, and ultimately lead to more creative interpretations and adjustments of the game. As you continue to utilize the Dungeon Master's Guide in your adventure building and your storytelling, I believe you'll find appreciation for your players who utilize the game tools to prep and prepare and advance their characters in your realm because the things will mesh really well together.
whether you utilize the Dungeon Master's Guide virtually or the actual book itself. The spend is really worth it for a DM. Again, whether you're new or experienced, the information is great, the illustrations are fantastic, and the ability to drive further creativity but build on that consistency is really priceless. And I believe with this tool, utilizing it consistently is going to up your game, make your players appreciate the work that you do to put into your game, give you more confidence in building and playing your game, as well as DMing for your various players. So if you don't yet have your Dungeon Master's Guide, I highly recommend getting your Dungeon Master's Guide, going through it as you can, and putting it into use as quick as possible. I think you're going to find a fantastic outcome when you do. If you have questions about how to utilize the Dungeon Master's Guide, or you want to leave comments on how the Dungeon Master's Guide has helped up your game, please leave a comment below. I'm going to answer each and every one. I hope you enjoyed that video. Here's a link to another video that you may enjoy. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button to help us grow. If you'd like to support us, make sure you check out the description of the video with some links and leave a comment to let us know where will your adventures take you.